You know what they can't issue to a police department? No matter how much you try to budget for it. They can't, they don't sell it in the little blister pack things at the gun store. And you sure as hell can't buy it on Amazon or whatever gun, you know, online accessory bullshit site there is on the thing there. You can't buy it. It's a simple thing, really. And this lady in West Virginia had more of this particular piece of kit, apparently, than what happened a couple days ago with the law enforcement response or lack thereof, right? Until one of the guys there had it, but he was, you know, it was a little bit late. What's that kit, guys? Anyone know the answer? Hey guys, Rex here. We just had a, a pretty good RX community discussion over on the Patreon channel, the Two Boards Source Rex Patreon channel, about the special kit that the lady had in West Virginia the other night. Did you hear about this one? Probably didn't hear about this one on the news. But a lady in West Virginia saved the day. Some dude decided to hammer away in a parking lot at a graduation party because he got mad because, like, People told him to slow down because there's kids there in his car. And so he came back with a rifle and started just hammering away at a graduation party. And this lady put him down. So on the RX community discussion there on Patreon, we we're talking about what kit did she have? Because after all, kit is what it's all about, right, guys? They're right, like, what, what gun did she have? What holster? What kind of hollow point bullets? Like, how did she do a primer sealing? Like, uh... You know, like, what kind of light did she have on her gun? What kind of sight upgrades did she have? Who did her trigger job? Like, how did she prefer to carry her magazine? What kind of war belt did she prefer? Where did she put her uh, dump pouch? What kind of dump pouch did she use on her war belt? You know, like, all that shit that's really important and stuff, right, guys? Like, because that usually makes the difference. That's where the attention goes. I'll tell you what, man. That might be a major malfunction of that whole crowd of would-be sheepdogs and overemphasis on kit throughout their entire upbringing in that community what does that possibly what what's the best that could possibly do slow you down to respond because you didn't put all your shit on yet oh i still need to organize and stuff i'll tell you what i had really bad encounters with evil shit in my life to where I was fighting for my life, fighting literally for my life, for like 30 minutes, waiting for this special team to come and save me. The special team was on the way. Doesn't matter what, when they're not there. And so I'm fighting like hell for 30 minutes and by the time the fight is over and I had to do the fight, the special team comes in like, oh shit, looks like it's all done now. I'm like, yeah, look, look, look at me. I look like a Looney Tunes character that got shredded. You guys are too slow. Well, we had to kid up. Where, how come I didn't have to kid up? Hmm? That's a true story, man. It's a, how many times do you think that happened? So what's this special kit? Like, what's the thing that tipped the scales in the favor for the good guys in history, I wonder? Oh, what did, um, what's the guy's name? Travis Prescott? Or, no, not Travis Prescott. William Prescott. Bunker Hill? There's 1,200 guys, you know? Like, what was the kit that helped them to do Bunker Hill and have that shot heard out, you know, that rang out around, around the world, and then they eventually took on the British and, like, took them out? Like, what did, like, uh, the Colonial Army use? Like, I wonder, like, how many... <laughs> I mean, I think that stuff is fun, right? Like, historical collecting shit and, like, collecting all the toys and all the, the battle gear and all the shit, right? But, like... Do you think it was, what kind of uh, lead did they use? What mixture? Where did they get the, their flint from? What hill did they get their flint from? Because, you know, there's different kinds of flint. And, like, depending on which one you use, it's more or less reliable. Like, exactly how did they do this? What, what, what uh, did they, like, brass hardware on their sling? Or what? What kind of, like, what was the thickness of their sling they used? Like, how did they have it adjusted on the rifle and shit? Because, you know, the kit and stuff, right, guys? 
Okay, the kit. Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. you, you picking up on my point? There is a piece of kit that is common amongst the winners. How about the Alamo? Anyone ever think about that one? The Alamo? Right? Like, what was that guy's name? That was uh, Travis, right? Man, I'm not a historian. I'm a science guy, right? So I don't remember the guy's name. I think it was Travis. And then he had, like, Davy Crockett and stuff, right? I seen the movie with John Wayne where him and I think it was uh, Travis were having the discussion about John Wayne's character, Davy Crockett. Like, hey, you're educated, Davy Crockett. What's your deal? How come you're talking like such a buffoon around these crazy Tennessee guys? Like, they're just crazy. Like, yeah, I know you You need to talk smart like me. And he's like, hey, I need to, like, be the leader of my particular men. So I'll use whatever language they use. There's a good movie, The Alamo. One of my favorites, the old black and white one. What kit did, what kit did Davy Crockett have? You know, like, how did he get that freaking coonskin hat on properly or whatever the hell he had on his head, right? I, you know, David Crockett's actually one of my relatives, you know, and a lot of other people because that was a long time ago, right? But what was the kit? Like, what What made Texas win there, guys, back in the day? What was the difference between what um, Travis and Davy Crockett and all these guys had at the Elmo that they apparently didn't have a couple days ago? What special kit made the Elmo thing you know, it was a psychological victory, right? At least, at least. I mean, did they win the battle at the Alamo? Did they? Did they lose the Alamo? Tell me, hundreds of years later, did they lose the battle at the Alamo? Yes or no? Somebody tell me. Well, they all died, see? Well, sometimes it happens. What was the objective? The objective is to say no to evil shit. To say no to dudes bossing you around that you don't want bossed around. To say no to tyranny. To say no to stuff you... To say no to a certain program. Did they accomplish that? Mm, yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Did they lose at the Alamo or did they win? And if so, why do we still remember that? What kit was it, guys? Hmm? You know what, the, you know what they can't issue to a police department? no matter how much you try to budget for it. They can't, they don't sell it in the little blister pack things at the gun store. And you sure as hell can't buy it on Amazon or whatever gun, you know, online accessory bullshit site there is on the thing there. You can't buy it. It's a simple thing, really. And this lady in West Virginia had more of this particular piece of kit, apparently, than what happened a couple days ago with the law enforcement response or lack thereof, right? Until one of the guys there had it, but he was, you know, it was a little bit late. What's that kit, guys? Anyone know the answer? Come on, I'll let you guess for a minute. Ready? fucking balls, man. Doesn't matter how much shit you strap on or how much stuff you know or how good you are on the flat range and how cool you look on your Instagram and like what classes you took and what training you did in the army or whatever the hell. Doesn't matter if you don't have no balls. Balls and moral high ground goes a long ways, don't it? The lady in West Virginia was packing balls. She said, oh, active shooter. Not anymore. End of story. Yeah, the lady had balls. More than hundreds of guys or whatever the hell responded at the other place. I don't mean that in a bad way. Not to be a backseat uh, driver or anything, but what the shit, man. Wow, well, let's just like get organized around here. People pop. Huh, something's going on in there. Let's, all right, we need to get even more organized. Pop. Oh, huh. oh, geez. Well, hold on. Let's make sure everyone understands outside this perimeter who's in control of the situation. Hmm, good job. That's going to be a case study for a while, huh? You know it's true. It's true. Balls. One time I was at the Spanish Military Academy, and they have a big museum there. It's in uh, Toledo. Spain, 
outside of Madrid there. Real historical town. They used to make really good steel there, good rifles, good weapons. Very historical. And uh, that's where the military academy is. And they have a big museum there of military history of Spain. Incredible museum. Man, Spain was everywhere. Like, they talk about an empire. You forget that one. Like, they don't teach that in America for some reason. Like, oh, they just kind of mention, oh, there's Spanish Armada, Spanish Empire, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, okay. But anyways, uh, back during, like, uh, World War II, Spain was having their own war there around that same time. And there was a couple different sides. And uh, they were hammering the hell out of the building where I, the museum is now with artillery and machine guns and just shooting at it for days and days and days. And the general who was there, and maybe someone can refresh, refresh my memory on the name. I can't remember some of these names, but he was there. I remember the story because I stood in the office where this guy uh, had his telephone, the famous telephone. Yeah. And he was charged to defend this building. He's like, okay, he took that shit seriously. Well, they captured his son. The enemy captured his son. And there's a big valley across the way and they're hammering away and that office just got freaking shredded, man. Like there's a bullet hole every like square inch or whatever in that office or... And um, they captured his son and they're using him as a hostage and they called him and like, hey, we got your son. We're gonna, we're gonna take him out unless you surrender now. If you surrender, we'll let him live. And you have this much time to respond. So they gave him like a deadline. He's like, no need to wait till the deadline do it now. I'm not surrendering. Hung up the phone. So they took out his son, man. They took out his son. And when they finally got there, because he held his position, man. He did not leave his post until he was properly relieved. When they finally got there with the rest of the backup guys, there was a real sober occasion. They came up real careful, real respectful, because he held his ground. And they knew that he gave up his son to hold that ground without bitching about it, without complaining, without crying. And they came up and they approached him like real sober, respectfully, like, and he came up to them in a military posture and saluted or whatever. And he said, um, all is well here. The post has uh, been defended or whatever. Something to that effect. Maybe I'm getting the story a little wrong, but that's pretty much the part I remember. And they said, holy crap. After all that, he came up there and he had principles that superseded his own personal shit and he had the balls to defend his principles. Balls and principles go a long way, don't they? That's why the United States came into existence, not because of some kind of special kit what happened to all the other countries that are still nothing against our brethren there, right? That are still under the control of the queen or whatever, man. Like, hey, if that's your thing, that's cool. But that's the big difference. Can you tell that I'm slightly American on that deal, man? I mean, I'm not trying to the deal there, but like, that's what it is. And what are those principles that this country was founded on? That's the foundation, man. Rex, why do you talk about all this moral stuff and biblical stuff all the time? This is a gun channel. You just need to talk about the guns. It is my responsibility to cover the foundation of the lawful use of weapons as liberty teeth of preserving our liberty. What's the foundation of that deal? It is not about kit. It's not about freaking items. It's not about like even how to use the kit properly. None of that shit matters. If you don't got principles that are sound, that are worth defending, you will, will not have the, you, will, you cannot conjure up the balls if you don't have principles to defend. But balls are a natural consequence of having stuff you truly believe in. It happens automatically. And you can't buy that at a gun store.